कहते शो में साइन लाइक सो आई वॉज सिंग साक्षात पर ब्रह्म साई गुरु वंदन सो आई वॉज सिंग दैट बजन दिस माय सिस्टर इन लॉ एंड माय वाइफ दे वर क्लोजिंग द राइस एंड दे सिंगिंग अलॉन्ग एंड देन आफ्टर आई फिनिश द बजन सो वेन आई आज दिस क्वेश्चन दिस फ्लावर फ्लू द हेयर एंड जस्ट फेल लाइक दैट एंड दैट्स लाइक I'm a hallucinating. I was evidence-based spirituality. I'm not like oh, I'm going to believe this. Ah, I was like it can't be. I'm singing, but you know, no, it cannot be. I'm doing this, and my wife opens her eyes and says, "Tell her." She's like, "Why is that flower on the floor there?" I said, "You didn't see what happened here." She said, "No, I didn't see that." Sai Ram dear listeners welcome to Sai Soul 100 our guest today is Dr Sashi Dharan who is joining us from South Brunswick New Jersey Sai Ram brother Sashi welcome to Sai Soul 100 please share your story Sai Ram Prabha I'm and I'm, I'm happy to be here and share some of my stories uh, of my experiences with Swami Uh, but before that i would like to talk about my background as i was growing up i was always questioning about you know the religious beliefs and the superstition and the casteism and things like that so it was always bothered me right and religion was al- always being used as a weapon to divide people rather than unite them so all these things were bothering me at the time and there were some other instances where uh people like godmen and things like that they, they like they came into my house my parents brought them and they basically after some time they started uh, basically robbing my parents <laughs> so i took a stick out and i was like 12 years old at the time drove them away so that was in my mind so when anybody claims that they are they have the supernatural powers or they 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 are god and things like that i said forget it so that's how i grew up and i i was i grew up in hyderabad so shivam was right there so i knew all about sai baba and all those other god men around that so basically i became a anti sai i was an avid reader of people who would say things about you know all these god men and things like that so that's basically the background because i was totally against all these things and so then fast forward like come to the united states i meet my would be wife in boston and so i get introduced to her and the engagement was to take place the next day and so i go to their house in boston my sister in law lina so she she is uh, ss she basically they all grew up in singapore so they she was uh, my sister in law was a ssc guru from singapore she was also teaching in boston my mother in law was a founder member of the singapore sai center in the 70s so basically they were all like so much into sai so they were doing aarti in the evening and i was sitting in the living room they said uh, can you join you for the aarti i was like so my shock right I don't want to see this guy, right? I don't want to see his picture. I don't want to see any do anything with. Him. So my mother-in-law saw the reaction. She is to be called Lata Auntie in Singapore. So she saw my face, and it's like I saw a ghost or something like that, right? So basically, she said, uh, she looked at me, said, "I know, I know, I know. You, you don't. You, if you don't follow Sami, it's okay, but." if you have experience then you should start believing in him all right you should if you get your own experience now you don't believe it's okay this is that's so so that was a big flaw so i was i was even contemplating should, should i marry her or not marry her because this is i don't want to marry sathya sai baba along with her this was my issue at that time but you know everything else was fine except the flaw that they are sai devotees which i don't want to be Well, in a part of it. Okay, so then we get married in in eighty uh, seven, uh, November first. I get married, and she says, uh, "You know, I don't want to go for any honeymoon anywhere. I want to go to Parthi. <laughs> I want to go to Puttaparthi." I was like, 
that's not the place ashram I want to go after marriage. That's not the place I want to go. And moreover, you know, I don't want to follow this. So basically, I didn't want to new bride. I didn't want to say make her unhappy. You know, they already bought the tickets for party. Everything they were all made all the arrangements. And so basically on November 6th, I land in Parthi. And I had to sit in the sand. It was hot and all that. Says, What's going on? It's, it's like six days after wedding. I'm like, you know, sitting in the sand there. And so the music starts and Swami comes for darshan. And he stands right in front of me, like about maybe like 100 feet. I was far away, 100 feet. So I look at all. So in my mind, it was, I was thinking, oh, you are the... Sai Baba, right? I was just, all these thoughts were coming. He stood there, he looked in my direction, and I look in his direction. And this goes on for some time. I never ever saw Swami standing for a very long time in one location. He would just move around. And I couldn't take it. The, the, the stare or gaze of Swami, I couldn't take it. He was like staring right into my eyes. Then I said, you won't go away. I said, like this. I did a namaskaran to Swami. So the, he just moved out, just went back to Mandir from there, right? So that's what happened, the first darshan. So I didn't make much of it. Uh, I came back to New Jersey. We were, I was living in New Jersey at that time. And my wife joins. So when she comes, she brings the, the suitcase full of like three pictures, very large pictures of Swami. I look at it and say, okay, you want to pray to Swami? You go ahead and do it, but put it in the closet opening the closet and praying every day. And maybe she was praying to Swami to change my, you know, thoughts and things like that. And so I would say my wife is the lighthouse that led me to this side. So one morning, 5 a.m. in the morning, it's the month of May, I get this beautiful dream. At, at the time, I didn't care much. Now I go, looking back, I would say it's a beautiful dream of Swami. Swami comes in my dream and tells me many things. And I said, what is that about? He tells me some numbers and things like that. So I didn't realize. It was a very long dream. So I tell my wife, Swami came in my dream. So she was like, oh, that's, you know, great. So basically she rings up mother-in-law in Singapore. There was this conversation. So she from there, oh, she, you're blessed. You know, you're having Swami's dream, all these things. Uh, the conversations, it's all about that. So I take the car and I was driving on the highway. I see the sign to New York. So I get a call from Mount Sinai Hospital asking that, would you like to join this position here? We have a position, would you like to join? This? So the advertised salary was something, but Swami tells me some salary, in the, not salary, some number. And then they said, okay, now we'll hike it up and we'll give you this one. And that was the number Swami said. I was thinking, why Swami said that? He said, go so many miles, don't look back. He said, how can you, anybody go so many miles and not see anybody? You will not see anybody. I didn't understand that concept, what that was. And then I was thinking, how do I do this? In, in the dream, I was thinking, how can I walk so many miles and not see anybody? The reason was when I joined the department, Nobody was there. there was, I didn't have to look back. So I rose to the ranks, through the ranks. There was no problem for me. Right? So don't look back, he said, Swami. Do not look back. So that was what happened. So immediately, we started moving to New York. And the first thing I did was to make a nice altar for her. So then one day, we happened to go to the Hindu temple in Flushing. And that was in the evening. So basically a group of people, they were all dispersing after the bhajans. And so she, my wife saw Swami, Swami's picture in the uh, hall there. And she inquired about it. Immediately, we, we, they all became friends. From next, next week onwards, we were part of the Sai group there. It was a bhajan mandali, right? So they were not part of the SSIO at the time. So there was another flushing Sai center in somebody's house. We became... Uh, part of this group. So as I was getting involved with them, I don't know what got into me. I was not so much. I was actually pretend to be because I was trying to make her happy. So I was, okay, you want to sing bhajans? Okay, I'll sing bhajans. 
So things like that, I'll just do it for making my wife, wife happy, right? Going along with the, the flow of the what was going on around. But something struck me uh, in 99. Why, why are we not a part of the SSI? You know, things like that. I started asking questions. I went to talk to all these elders. They said, no, no, no. You, you know, we don't want to be part of that. And there was this problem. Then I, we tried to convince everybody. Then said, okay, we'll do it. So this was bothering me. Like, they're all very good friends. It's just that a, a thought came into my head and I convinced them. Then they agreed first and then they disagreed later on. So I said, what's going on here? So I said, should I go forward or not? I was asking this question to uh, Swami, right? Show me some miracles. So we, in 97, I happened to go for the Ratha, inauguration of the Ratha Yatra and the Paduka Puja and all that. So we were like about 2,000 people um, who attended that program. And so Swami said, oh, you're all liberated, all those who participated. So I was actually supposed to pull the Ratha, the golden chariot, but then there was some issue. Then the Swami said, my students will pull it. So that was the story. So I brought the Padukas. So Padukas were kept there in front of the in Swami's picture. And there was two flowers that we keep every every day. Two flowers. This is, at your, this is at your home? Home. You brought the Padukas to your home? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Padukas, we brought it home, the little Padukas. And we, we always keep those um, flowers on the. So I said, show me a sign, right? So I was saying, Sakshat Parabrahma Sai. Guru Vandana. So I was seeing that bhajan, this, uh, my sister-in-law and uh, my wife, they were closing their eyes and they're singing along. And then after I finished the bhajan, I, so when I asked this question, this flower flew in the hair and just fell like that. And I was like, am I hallucinating? But like, I'm scientific. I, I, you know, I was evidence-based spirituality. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to believe this. Ah. I was like, it can't be. I'm singing, but you know, no, it cannot be. I'm doing this. And my wife opens her eyes and sister-in-law, she's like, why is that flower on the floor there? I said, you didn't see what happened here? She said, no, I didn't see that. She thought I threw the flower on the, like she got mad that I took the flower and threw it on the floor. <laughs> my skeptical mind, I was like, no, 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 this is not happening, right? This is not true. So I told my friends that day I saw this. So I would not believe also if somebody comes and tells me flower flew in the air. I see, I've seen flower falling from the pictures. And I say, oh, it's gravity. This is against the gravity, it's going up. So I was like, it can't be. So again, I was not convinced. Then all the Swami's pictures started oozing like, some syrup started coming out of Swami's pictures. There were other pictures in the room, you know, none of them had, but only Swami's pictures, you saw all this. We basically collected that liquid for a, almost a week. So these things were going on. So I said, you're going ahead and forming the center. July 4th, 1999 center was formed. So at that time, they said, you have one center. So the Goldstein was the um, president at the time, and he said, you have a center there, about only one mile from here, so why two centers, right? So it so happened, they said, at that point, they were closing the center. They said, we cannot run this center anymore, can you take it over? <laughs> so there was no two centers. So one flushing size, which was started in like about 74 or something like that. So one of the oldest centers in New York and the US also. And that's how we became a one center, right? So everything was fine, but still some people left because they didn't want to be part of an SSIO because they said organization, there's rules and regulations. And we want to be free, you know, we don't want to be part of all these things, so, you know, so. We don't want to be told how to do arati or to do this thing. So I said, fine. But it bothered me. So I wrote a letter uh, to Swami saying that I'm coming to Parthi and I want to speak to you. If I did everything right, you will speak to me. If not, you will not speak. So I will come back and say, I dismantle everything I did. This was my resolve at the time. So I go to Parthi. So I go to the... Mandir, Swami comes for darshan. 
and he goes around, goes back to the mandir. He didn't come to uh, talk to me. And this was uh, Guru Purnima time. Cyclone Thal was packed, over 10,000 people there. So Swami made some vibhuti to others and just went back into the mandir. He was stepping into the mandir. I said in my thought, Swami, you are not coming to me, right? I was just looking at like, Swami, are you not coming to me? So that, that means I did everything wrong, right? So I should just go back and apologize to my elders and just dismantle everything I did. You know, from there, he just takes a turn, 180 degrees and looks in my direction. This was like about 200 feet away. He turns back, comes straight to me. You know, I, I had all these thoughts. I said, I may not have time and also I may not say anything. If Swami asks, I may not be able to even open my mouth. So let me write down all the things I wanted to ask. So I had a letter, a letter pad. In those days, they would, they would allow to you to take a pen and a pen. Afterwards, they stopped all that. So I wrote everything, right? So I, then I bundled that with the pad that uh, all the letters and this sheet of paper, I wrapped it around. So I looked at Swami and I was dumbfounded. I couldn't speak. And I, I, I offered the letters to Swami like this. Swami said, he said, one by one, take the letter. I was put a rubber band and all that. So there were like 20 letters or something like that. So I would take one letter, I'll give it to him, he will smile. One letter, I'll smile. Then I gave the letter where I wrote. So I asked Swami everything, you know. So Swami said, I'll take care of it. I know everything, I'll take care of it. And he went back. So I was convinced we came back and that was the story where the, you know, how I got more and more involved with the, all these activities. If you ask me, did you transform after becoming Sai devotee? I would say, I don't think so much because my, like the religion thing, Swami says, there's only one religion. That's the religion of love, right? And that's exactly, I was thinking before even I knew Swami. I was thinking religion should be uniting people, not dividing them, right? So there's, Swami says, there's only one caste, caste of humanity. So all these beliefs were like reinforced. I would say it's more than transformation. These things were reinforced in me, right? So it was much more easier for me to follow because I didn't have to change much. Then, of course, so many dreams of Swami, you know, like every year I'll have like two dreams. One such dream was, it was in 88, immediately after moving to um, New York. Swami comes to my dream and gives me like a Vishwarupam, you know, like he, he basically attains a cosmic form. Swami is going, becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And I said, like, there is Swami, there is Swami in the dream I'm saying and following. And end up in Puttaparthi. And when I reach Puttaparthi, Swami asks me to sit. So he makes something to, for me to eat. So he gives it in my hand, I eat. And I see all around, they were, they were performing um, all this um, uh, chantings and all this homagundams and things like that were all the way there. So I was thinking, what is this dream? 2006, I go for a scientific conference and that is the time they were having the Atirudra Mahayagna. So they were building. When I was in the veranda, and those the guys who are in charge, I was talking to them at the time. They were building this. It just came back to me after 18 years or so, the whole picture. Then I said, is, is Swami going to talk to me? Right? Because, because he made something and gave it to me. Right? So I was sitting there in the veranda. So he was talking about well, well, if the if the smoke comes, where will it go? He was doing he was doing this. At that time, the another professor uh, tells Swami that this is a Dr. Shashi that is sitting at the back. So he looks at me like this. So I go near him. He said, "Sit there." So I sit back. And he was talking about how the smoke will go when they do the uh, yagna and all that. So after that, Swami finishes that conversation with those gentlemen and then turns around and comes and stands near the railing of the veranda and looks in my direction. So I am talking to Swami in Telugu because I grew up in Hyderabad, so I couldn't speak Telugu. So I said, 
Could I come to you, Swami? Like I do this. Swami said, Kurcho. He did. So the rest of the people didn't hear what was the conversation. They, they all said, oh, Swami is giving Abhayahasta to everybody, right? They were like always, all, all of them like doing this. And I'm doing this. Swami said, no, I will come to you. You don't come to me. So that's uh, how I became, uh, you know, part of this organization. And I started following Swami. Sairam, Brother Sashi, uh, what a wonderful journey from truly an anti-Sai. It was a blessing to marry your wife, but then you also had to marry Swami. Uh, Swami came into your life that way. And uh, and the transformation that you had gone through in uh, moving from scientific mind to recognizing that Swami is beyond science um, is truly a journey that Swami has blessed you to have, right? And uh it, it's in the, just to watch the flowers go um, um, defy the gravity and to fly off and, and fall below. And for you to witness that, Swami wanted you to see it. So he was challenging your scientific mind so that you recognize that scientific mind is important for the science environment. But Swami is beyond that. Right? Yeah, Swami says that science ends where spirituality begins. Yes. Not the discourses. So. But, you know, uh, when you do science, you're always uh, trying to evidence-based medicine, evidence-based spirituality. So that's how you approach it. You want to have some evidence. You need to have that, be able to feel. So, so people ask, do you see current? No, but I can feel current. So, yeah. And also Swami does say that I know everything. I will take care of it. Right. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, your journey is like that from the beginning, whether you knew you knew it or not. Swami yeah. knew and he's mm. completely taking care of it. And again, this analogy of Swami is coming to you. Yeah. And you did, you're saying that you didn't transform because you already have the belief system. You all had the questioning mind. Right. Uh, you already had the values, but without Swami in your life. But now Swami is coming and reinforcing you to you that the values that you have is perfectly fine. You just need to understand there's be something beyond um, science. Yeah, that's and what I see it as like more than a reinforcement rather than transformation because it's already there that the grain of uh, the faith and everything was there. It needs to be rekindled and things like that. Sairam Dr. Sashidharan, thank you for joining Sai Soul 100 and sharing this wonderful story. Okay, thank you, Sairam. Sairam, dear listeners, thank you for listening to Sai Soul 100 with Dr. Sashidharan. I'm Prabha Swaminathan. Until next time, Jai Sairam.